process that we started with is um, there were a number of things that needed <coughs> to be done at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, this uh, septage receiving area upgrade um, combined with a wash down facility combined with we have some in external and internal piping that needs to be corrected at the uh, wastewater treatment plant. When discussing this with the Board of Selectmen, the idea was to put all these things together because certainly the, the type of uh, labor, professional labor, their contract labor that would be hired, let's say, to repipe the uh, septage lagoon and, or uh, septage receiving area and make changes to that would also be the same people that we would use to redo the internal piping uh, things that we have and also to excavate the ground to do the external piping uh, things that we have. Um, Michael Dubies, our uh, chief wastewater operator, he can explain to you if you will the, the intricacies and nuances of those things, but from a layman's terms, that's why we're here with one bond issue. Um, when I took over uh, in April, I asked Mike to go top to bottom, tell me all those things that are necessary to get improved at the plan. I asked basically all the department heads to do the same thing. He came out with a list, I think, of about 20 things. Some of them very minor $1,500 items, but some of them a lot bigger. It was these bigger ones that we elected to uh, move together because to do each one independently would we'd suffer the cost of rebidding four different projects, managing four different projects, all that would be multiplied four times. And that was the logic to put this sewer bond together. And I'll let Jennifer speak more to the, to the four components. <coughs> All right, sounds good. This is warming up. I do have some slides that we can go with it. Are we reading the whole thing, or did you say no? No, it's moved as read. No, no, read. Uh, so basically, the four components, and the first one that's talked about is the septic receiving station. Uh, right now, the septic receiving station that we have is a big concrete chamber. And if you give me one second here, um, now that it's rebooted and it can't find anything, we'll be... Uh, Good to go. <coughs> and this is uh, all part of the slideshow that you would find online. So if anybody's been on there, um, this whole presentation's on there. Yes, it is. So it just has the um, the same pictures. Yeah, and we, information. we did this same presentation up to this point for the Board of Selectmen. Up to this point. Yeah, in other words, we stuck before with the other Warren articles and the other um, CIP items and right. budget idea. So when we, prevent, uh, when we presented to the Selectmen, this was the sewer bond presentation we also did um, right. to Selectmen. So basically, let's start the slideshow from here. And basically, what is in this bond? Uh, there are four components that are in the bond. Uh, you have the septage receiving station uh, that would be part of this bond. You have a uh, washdown facility. Uh, this washdown facility is connected. This is where the discharge from the washdown facility would go. It would go to the septage receiving station. Uh, there are new uh, pumps and drives and uh, pressure reducing systems that would go with the uh, recycled plant water. The recycled plant water is also part of the septic receiving station. They all are interconnected. And then the last piece here um, is a emergency generator for the plant aeration system. Uh, this component, um, albeit not tied uh, to the septage receiving station, the recycled plant water, or the washdown facility directly, is a crucial component for the operation of the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, right now, uh, there is no emergency power for our aeration system, and the aeration system is what provides our <coughs> secondary treatment, which is required under our permit. So for a long extended period of time, if we were to lose power, we would not be able to provide the second process of our uh, treatment facility. So that was why we grouped this uh, all together. 
so those are the four components that are part of the uh, sewer bond article. Uh, basically, what is this septage receiving station for you uh, that may not be familiar with it? Um, last year, well, in 2014, we did uh, one, over 1 1.4 million gallons of septage uh, was taken into the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, basically, this is municipal, industrial, the septic tanks. They all come and discharge into the septage receiving station. Um, as you can imagine, this material is not just straight up doo or poo. Uh, it all comes with uh, hairs and plastics and grease and particles. And once all those things, if they aren't taken out appropriately and get into our headwork systems, they just cause us problems down the line. Um, the system that we have, uh, basically, you can see in the top hand corner there, there's a truck emptying. It's a little bit of a trough. It goes into the trough that goes into the tank. And you manually have to take a rake and rake it off if whoever's discharging and then put it into that grit box that is uh, behind it. Uh, so that is the current process. Right now when the septage goes in, I had mentioned before how the recycled plant water is part of this. That recycled plant water flows to help make it move and dilute it and bring it back into the headwork system. <coughs> um, and then it goes off to the headworks, which is the first part of the treatment process in our system. Uh, so the septic receiving station that we're looking to have is, um, they call it this Raptor system. Um, basically, it would help us um, get these fine particles out, get these uh, materials, the hairs, the plastics, uh, allow us to get it out so that we don't have these problems downstream as far as the pumps and the clogging. Um, as part of redoing this, we'd get a new grit box. The new grit box um, would be weather tight. The one we have right now is not. Uh, right now, we're paying probably over $8,000 a year to treat that water that was coming in to dilute it. That water has already gone through the treatment process and it comes back in and it goes back in. So we're treating water that we've already treated over and over again. So this would remove that redundancy in retreating uh, water. And at the bottom here, you can see um, our grip box is over <coughs> 10 years old. Um, so that's the septage receiving part. The washdown facility, what you're looking at right now is our current washdown facility. It's uh, not high tech in its greatest sense of the words. Uh, what we need to do is have a system that meets um, the regulations. We need to be able to capture the runoff. We need to be able to uh, contain the runoff, separate the runoff, treat the runoff. Um, we need to have a place to wash down the vehicles to get the salts, the sands, the dirts, the things off of all our vehicles, um, our vehicles, police vehicles, fire vehicles. What you're also looking at there, it's the fire hydrant with two hoses sticking out of it. Why two hoses? When the sweeper comes in on a daily basis, um, they actually take the fire hose connected to the back of the sweeper, and that's what we use to flush the sweeper out with. Um, and so all the grit that you see on the ground is literally beach sweepings or sweepings that we've taken off the roads. Um, we then go back with a backhoe and scrape the pavement, pick that up, and probably either put it in the, the grit box or if it's clean enough, it goes right back into our sand piles, our, our refuse pile. So it's a very uh, low-tech, non, really non-conforming way to do what we do. And laborious. Right. I mean, the fact that you then have to get into another machine to sweep it up, to pick it up, to drive it somewhere else, discharge it, versus putting it through the process. Yep. Um, Go ahead. So again, this is connected because the new septage receiving station, um, it would be covered it would have the washing capability. We are not talking a car wash. That's not what this is. It's, it's the appropriate hoses um, and heights and levels to be able to wash tops and bottoms of the vehicles. Um, it has the appropriate under drains to collect the water and then the piping uh, to take it to the septage receiving station. Um, and, and most importantly, it's gonna be designed as what they call a best management practice, which is what meets the regulations. So that brings us to these internal, uh, internal recycling yard piping improvements. And I challenge you all to say that fast a lot because I can't. Um, basically, as I was saying, currently the flow that enters um, the headworks building, so the first part of the treatment plant, um, it's, if you were to uh, meter it, 
it, it's skewed because you're getting the stuff from the septic uh, receiving station that has the yard piping in it. So it's not all waters that are coming or, or waste that's coming to the plant. It's some plant water that's also coming to the plant. Uh, this was something that was identified by DES um, during the administrative order uh, that this area should be separated. So that would be one of the improvements that would be done here. Um, it would also install the actual flow meters so we could get readings um, of what's exactly coming in from all the areas once we remove um, this recycled water. Um, so if you think of it, you have the Northeast Interceptor, the Septic Station that comes in, you have the Church Street Station that comes in, and then all the West End flows. Now we'll be able to bring them all to one port and be able to sample those um, to get not only just flows, but look what's coming into the headworks process. Currently, if I can add to that, one of the problems we have, we have high strength waste coming in from a certain part of town. And right now, we're not able to grab a sample and determine what the actual strength of that waste is. Um, it, it's so strong, it causes fluctuations in the, in the plant's operations. So the other thing that we're not also able to do is uh, flow monitoring as part of the when we had uh, an I and I study done two years ago, and we, you know, we treat 950 million gallons a year. People only use or purchase from aquarium about 350 million gallons a year. So 600 million gallons is inflow. We're trying to figure out where is it, where is it coming from. Our problem is it's it all ends up in the bathtub, and there's no way to, for us to segregate the flows. We know what comes from Church Street Pump Station, but from down Tide Mill Road or the Northeast Interceptor, it's just coming. Uh, we have no way of segregating that. If we have no way of segregating it, we have no way of knowing which run to, to go up to to look for our biggest problems. So in the long run, a, a project like this will help us uh, more quickly identify where our problem areas and more <coughs> accurately be able to measure the flows measure the from flow each of those and areas. apply any money that we have to to the actual source of the problem right now we'd be like you know a guy holes in the the dike you know the little dutch boy so that's the, another reason for the project while we're on this slide can you explain the des um, administrative order <laughs> the des administrative order was um a number of years ago we had and this goes back four or five. We had, actually goes back six. We decant or dewater and, and, and pull out of the process sludge. To most people, it looks like wet peat moss. There's a, we have what we call a sludge press that we put that through. Well, the sludge <coughs> press was at the end of its useful life. Wasn't performing very well. Um, and as a result, uh, sludge layers in each one of the tanks, right now we maintain on all the big clarifiers two, maybe four, tops maybe six, but if we do six, it's for a very short period of time. That's the thickened water at the bottom. We actually test or we, we dipstick for that, better, lack of a, he calls it a sludge stick, lack of a better reason every day. <coughs> um, so we maintain a very low level. Back five years ago, it was 12 feet and 14 feet thick. Basically, uh, we weren't dewatering. Uh, because we weren't taking action, we were just hauling off a lot of thick water every day, uh, just transporting it off site in a tanker truck, that we ended up going under administrative order. The administrative order resulted in the project that two years ago we completed, and that was a new press. We have a new four, Fournier four-barrel uh, press. We now produce cake anywhere from 24 to some days 30 and 31 percent cake. Is that good? Yeah. Because the better, thicker cake you produce or process, the less water you're, you're hauling out of the plant and the less tipping fees you have to pay at the landfill. So that was the administrative order. But they also recognized under the administrative order, they identified these other things that you should take action on. For instance, one of them was um, the pump that actually pushes the sludge to this press. It doesn't give us a constant pressure. Mike's work with Penn Valley Pump. We have a new 
pump that's installed. Um, we're going to test run it for six months before we pay for it. So operationally under that administrative order, they did identify some other things, and this internal yard piping was one of them. Where do you want us? Do you want us to continue? Or, or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. So the uh, next part of this and included in here, and this goes with, uh, again, having the same contractor. So you're going to be there redoing piping and things. Uh, the valve pit safety projects. <coughs> These are the valves that control the flow from the thickeners and the primary clarifiers. They all come to one point on all the lines that come in. It is down in a uh, concrete pit. Uh, that basically requires confined space entry. And these are manual valves. They do not have the uh, electronic automated systems on them. Uh, so this is just something while we have everybody there that we would be able to uh, put in six new valves, attach the appropriate electronics, get the SCADA systems in and programmed so it becomes part of our job cal and part of our everyday uh, monitoring so that we can monitor um, these primary and uh, clarifier drains and the thickeners. To build on what Jennifer said, this is not a feel-good project. Um, two years ago, uh, during a plant tour, I got the opportunity to look in this particular area because of uh, uh, a little bug, had, little birdie put a bug in my ear. What I observed was um, the pipes that you see there, those two red pipes, they're only about a foot off the floor. <coughs> um, the grit that's in the sludge is so abrasive that as it passed through the pipes and through the valves that are in this pit, it actually wore away the pipe. Almost, well, it was, it was paper thin. It was to the point that effluent was coming onto the floor in the pit as quickly as it was leaving. So it was basically just, it was a self-siphoning pit. Um, because it's a hazard for our employees to go down in there um, it wasn't part of the daily check it was part of a weekly or let's say a monthly check um, so when I saw this I said really it's it's unacceptable for in the future because one if it had gone if the failure had gone further I could have lost one of the tanks it could have bubbled up through the ground that problem I didn't want to have to deal with secondly I didn't like the fact that uh, it if I was in an emergency situation like, let's say, after hours, and we get a lot of after hour calls, two people would have had to come in to respond to this, one to stand above board, one below board, so we follow safety protocols. Since I've come on, and you can ask all the people that I work with, safety is, is job one. If, and I even said it today to people, if there's something that's in the facility that's not being done safely, requires me to spend money, let's say, to buy goggles, <coughs> a fall hazard, a trip hazard, or in this case, a hazard to people going into a pit, I want to know about it and I want it corrected now. That to me is more important than, let's say, you know, you've asked me before, what, why sometimes don't I cut all the trees that's in my budget? Why don't I cut this? Well, if it came to cutting a tree or doing this, making it safer, I'd do this. Why? Because the, the value of the staff that we have. Safety is one, job one. And I repeatedly tell the staff, do the job right, do it safely. We ask a question in the interview process, what are the three most important tasks whenever we hire somebody for doing a job? The correct answer is safe, on time, and maybe within budget or correctly we get all sorts of answers. Well, look at the manual, get it done really quick, or get it done for a nickel. That's not the answer we're looking for. Safety first. And we stock that right from the beginning. So that's why this project was identified and is on here. Partly the reason why the pipe even corroded out to begin with was the very first project that we told you about, the septage lagoon, or the, uh, the grit receiving area in our septage. We need to get more grit out of the process. If we don't, it ruins pumps, it erodes pipes, it just causes us maintenance headaches that ultimately cost us dollars. When you look at how much it costs to maintain this plant, 
Why does this guy spend $90,000 a year in just general maintenance? This is one of the reasons why. So these upgrades are not feel-good projects. They are truly necessary to operate the plant more cost-effectively and to keep it operational 100%. It's a huge investment. <clears throat> That's all I have. And then with that is this last piece that uh, I spoke about earlier, the aeration blower um, generator. So basically, uh, the blowers are the component of the aeration system that provide the air, that feed the bugs, that do all the good things that break down the process. Um, we have three existing blowers currently. Uh, there is room for expansion. Uh, it requires us to have two on at a minimum during the summer just to keep up with the demand. Um, and on top of that, in the summertime, the blowers become less efficient because it's so hot out, so they have to work harder and harder. Uh, we have no backup power uh, connected to these blowers. Uh, it was something that was identified through uh, a, a Homeland Security uh, tour type of thing where they were looking at your emergency <coughs> response systems and those type of things. Uh, that was something that was identified and something that I will say just right now um, and why the article is written as such is that we have been authorized 100,000 uh, towards uh, the component of this um, for this generate, emergency generator. Uh, the new emergency generator is a 600 kilowatt. It will work on the blowers. Uh, part of this is also figuring out um, the, the happy medium, uh, making sure that the right blowers are there with the right emergency backup. So we get the most efficient system. Just because the blower is bigger doesn't necessarily mean we need to have three big blowers. Maybe it's more efficient to have a smaller mower into, but this is all part of what we put into the cost estimate uh, and everything when looking at this generator so we would uh, have the funds available to pick the right one. I asked uh, some people in Concord how come um, we never had aeration. We have, mo we have all the other aspects of the plant backed up by emergency power. We have a big cat generator right outside. But why was this, from the initial design, overlooked? They admitted that when they put together the design requirements in the 75 to, let's say, 85, having aeration on backup power was not a requirement. It is today. It has been for over 10 years. Uh, so they admit that if we were to undergo a major renovation of the plant, part of the permit process would be put the aeration section on backup power. If we were to open the next tank, right, during okay. the next expansion. Yeah. This is our Achilles heel. Yeah. This, this one project is our Achilles heel. For the, we've, been a, we've had instances where we have been without power uh, for like a day, had to run on the emergency generator. The bugs here, as the day goes on, they die. What happens is the fecal count goes up in the discharge water. I'd have to add a lot more chlorine to kill the bugs. And I may, in fact, run the risk of violating our discharge order i.e. sending out untreated water into the estuary. So this is the, the plant's Achilles heel. And that is, the, those are the components of the sewer bond. Right, so that's the sewer bond. I'll turn it back to you, Madam Chair. All right, a couple of questions. I see that included in this is um, to authorize participation in the SRF. Um, right. Do we know that there are any, I mean, it hasn't been much in SRF, but do we know that there are any funds available? Yeah, uh, we applied for them early. And, uh, I believe the blower was rated ninth out of 25, and then the septage receiving station, that was ranked 17 for the total projects that they got submitted. How many projects do they have? Uh, I believe it's 30. But then they cut them off up to 25, so they'll fund up like the top 25. Yeah, be nice to be in the top 10. Um, the costs that were assembled for this, Chris, are the two million. How was that determined? Jen has more of the backup, but a lot of it was from um, our consultant right here, and we actually had them look at the various components of it. 
I know they did the uh, the Raptor uh, grit removing equipment. They had that from other projects. In other words, they had a current pro price for projects that they're currently doing for others. Same thing with the uh, additional grit tanks. The building, they just used, it's a standard metal yeah, prefab building. We worked building. together on that one. Right. Yep, to so. price up the wash down facility. And then, you know, went out and looked at the price of the valves and uh, did labor costs and electrical costs. Uh, and plumbing so costs. is there an entire plan with that and those costs? Yes. I mean, everything is broken down into each of the individual projects. Project. Yes. I mean, this is an extensive presentation, and you seem to have quite a bit of documentation. At any point in time, was this conveyed to the budget committee? The information itself? Yeah. No, I'd have to say. I mean, this is a two million dollar bond, bond, and. We're going to sit here and scope of 20 minutes and decide whether we should recommend or not recommend $2 million to the taxpayers. Certainly would have been nice to have a little bit more prior to this meeting. I can say that in my first, I probably should take some responsibility for that. I, in the first year of my tenure, um, you come to grips with how things like this more accurately come together. I asked for the truth from my staff, and I got it. What I didn't, wasn't prepared for was the amount of work to um, bring the answers forward. Um, I give credit to Mike. He, he did exactly what I asked him to do, and that was, hey, here's all 22 things I'd like to get corrected in my plan. And so did the other staff. They came back with their 10s and 12s. And none of them are fictitious. Just today, I got a list from Mark Richardson at the transfer station, 32 separate items. Some of them are going to be very expensive. So in the future, I would say that if I'm coming back to you with something half a million and higher, I will ask to submit it forward. But to, but to do so, I do work with the Board of Selectmen and the, and the town manager and would get, have to get there concurrence and of course they'd have to vet it first so I take responsibility for that probably some information could have gotten to you sooner and as you say you do work for the town manager and the board of selectmen and it's a, it's a team approach that being the case no one's uh, it's not meant no, in any way shape or form Chris to put you under the gun because you work for other people but I think that some part of the consideration on uh, something of this magnitude two million dollars needs more than 20 minutes before us, no matter how wonderful the presentation is. Yep. Um, and believe it or not, we're trying to work here to help recommend those things to the, the, the voters of this town that we truly need. And you can imagine, it takes a little bit more comprehension on a wastewater treatment plant. Like you say, it's, right. it's not a pretty thing. It's not one of those things. but knowing more than I want to know when you start talking about safety and you start talking about some of these things that are looming. We also didn't have a lot of time on the pump station. So if this is the end of your presentation, I'm going to send it around the table for questions and bear with us because some of them may be benign, some of them may be very detailed based on the depth, but this has been our only opportunity to discuss it at all. So if you'd bear with us. I'm gonna start with Nick and then Jerry. Did I see your hand up? Yeah. Okay. Um seems like there's a lot of projects rolling to one. I'm I'm new to the table here. What is the benefit of uh lumping all these projects together? Could they be done separately? Um what's the benefit? I'll give you one for instance. The <clears throat> uh external yard piping and or the pit were both projects that are under the valve pit are both projects under a hundred thousand i could bid them separately um we could let them if you all come right out of a uh take them as a maintenance item at that small of amount they won't qualify for srf funding With that small of amount i'm going to suffer the cost of bidding each project independently mm -hmm. When the projects are that small, I won't like. We got a Penta 
corporation and, and, and another big corporation to bid on the, the, the pump, Church Street pump station. Projects that small, they... Not a big fish. Not a big fish, fish. exactly. Fish. So you have to, for SRF funding and or grant funding and or uh, a lot of the other projects that you want to go for, um, you, you have to combine work. And then when you do, the inspector that's uh, on the site that you're paying, in some cases, several hundred dollars a day for, uh, he can be sticking his head in on the septage uh, receiving station, seeing how that's going in, go over, see how the other crew is doing on the piping, go over to the yard and see how the excavation's going, changing that piping out. So you get some bang for the buck that way. Um, and then the tech the taxpayers get to decide, or I suppose the selectmen do, uh, whether to pay it back over 5, 10, 15 years, depending on how, what the bonding and total liability is for the town. So that's the benefit of grabbing these all together. We could have a huge economy of scale. Thank you, Chris. Yep. Thank you, Madam Chair. Jerry. Yep. <clears throat> and I know you've spent some time over there. Uh, I'm, I'm very familiar with the wastewater treatment plant <coughs> and the piping and the generators and the blowers and, and uh, some of the things he was talking about. But in November, this committee here designated Mike Plouff and myself to go and do due diligence on this project. My first memo went out on November 24th. I tried desperately throughout the month of December to get Mike and I in there it was denied. There's a lot of questions I have here that could have been answered. The measurement system associated with the piping and so on. A lot of things. I worked very closely with Mike Doobie and Mike Carl. I respect them a great deal. Finally, on December the 16th, I gave Chris seven dates. I said, look, pick one of these dates. Dr. Mike. I, Mike's was free. My, I was free three or four days before Christmas and three or four days after. Pick a date. We'll come in at 8.30, 9 o'clock. We'll stay till, mid, uh, stay till noon. We'll do diligence. I was interested in the project. I put 10 months of my life into this thing. I went in September of 2010, came out in March or April of 2011. And they had that big violation. And the violation was we released things into the estuary that were out of specification. That's what they clobbered us for. So I jumped in as a selectman at that time. I asked permission from Fred. He said no, but the selectman said, Jerry, go. I am technically orientated when it comes to quality control and process control. So I stayed there from September to March or April, and I did work, work with the fellows really well, and I even communicated with Fred daily or every other day, making make sure he knew where I was coming from, blah, blah, blah. Well, I tried to get in here. Couldn't do it. So I gave Chris the six dates. Didn't hear anything from six days. So finally, December the 22nd, I said, Chris, silence is not good. And Chris gave me some reasons why he couldn't, you know, he was sorry and he was busy and it was holidays, blah, blah, blah. So I didn't hear anything on December the 30th. December the 30th, he said, we'll meet you at the town hall at 1 o'clock conference room. I says, Chris, I, I can't do due diligence in a conference room. I got I to gotta see the piping diagrams. I got to understand this to carry this sediment back to this board here. And of course, Mike wanted to participate and he wanted to look at the vehicles. Mike didn't get a chance to look at the vehicles. And I let it go. A couple days later, I hear from Chris. He says, Jerry, you're coming at 1 o'clock. I says, where? The conference room? I said, that ship has sailed. I cannot report good sediment. I have no sediment. It's too bad. It is too bad because I know that I know what happens in that wastewater treatment plant. I know the flow. I know the process. I know the guys. And I respect them. But for us to be blocked out of there and stonewalled out of there, it really it was a slap in my face, and it should be a slap in your faces as the budget committee. And I'm going to read to you. 3216, Roman numeral 2. To confer with the governing body or bodies 
in with other officers, department heads, and other officials relative to estimated costs, revenues anticipated, and services performed to the extent deemed necessary by the Budget Committee. It shall be the duty of all such officers and other persons to furnish such pertinent information to the Budget Committee. It did not happen. It saddens me. It really does. I'm going to recommend and motion that we do not pass this article. We do not approve it. We do not approve it. I could not do due diligence. Either could Mike on the art on the vehicles. Okay. And that's kind of where I am right now. All right, Terry, I think we, we were stonewalled. We, we do have motion on the table to accept as okay. as written. Okay. So let us vote on this I one understand. first. Discussion, gentlemen. Sandy. Well. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. And then Mike. Um, I am going to support this. Uh, I know it's $2 million. I'm going to support it that it goes to, uh, as written, uh, to the public hearing. Uh, I would like to hear what the public has to say about it. Uh, there are a lot of projects combined in it. Um, I'm wondering how many years we are behind in doing this because, um, as you know, they have, and they've been divided up and sectioned off, and they've gone before the public, and they've been denied. Having said that, I don't want to speak for the public, because I want to hear what they have to say at the public hearing. You know, we've got a $25 million bond out there for the school. I'm really interested in seeing where that's going to fly. Things that have been listed here are absolutely needed, needed for <coughs> the welfare of the community. And I'm sorry that the subcommittee was not down there and that you d could not do the due diligence, but I don't think that we should penalize anybody, and especially this community, because this is so extremely well needed. I'm a bit concerned that it's being all lumped together in one thing but I, I will vote that it go forward because I do want to hear what the public has to say about it. And I, it's just, I don't, I don't know if it's going to get passed. There's so much on the, uh, there's going to be so much on the warrant. And there's just so much money. And everybody can think everything is just rosy and wonderful in Hampton. But people are losing jobs. Everything is not so wonderful out in the uh, economy. And, but I am a firm believer that it, it should go forward to the public and the public should get their input and the public decide. Appreciate that, Sandy. Mike? Uh, uh, yes, I'm of the feeling that when this committee or anybody that has the expertise to look at something like this has an opportunity to look at things and determine what's the best for the town, I think that's what we should do. That's what we tried to do, and we followed the statutes to the letter. And I'm very uh, annoyed that it's been such a rough road the last year or so with this particular combination. And it's really sad because what happens when you have a rough road like has been given us in the last few months and part of last year, it makes it very difficult for us to be objective. Very difficult makes it very difficult to be objective. And in view of that, and knowing what the statute says, because I've been down this road before, it's, you want something, you got to work with us so we can figure out what you need and why you need it and how we're going to pay for it. If you don't want to do that, we're all done here. I can't possibly support this. Steven? Yeah, I'm sorry, Mike, are you done? No, thank, thank you. you. Having watched your presentation, realizing how important it is that we have this system work, it cannot break. It cannot break. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now, the fact that this subcommittee wasn't didn't have entry, and to the uh, to the project, and I I realize that well, I agree with what Mike's saying. I agree with Jerry, and 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 that they you know if. It would have been nice. Okay, the road was rough. Let's uh, let's try to 
level the road out now. But the thing that I actually, I like your presentation. I like the fact that you are putting four things together. You're bonding it for X amount of years. I can tell you right now, $2 million, if just from my own experience at the Village District, we borrowed a million dollars last year. We got such an excellent rate that instead of bonding it, which would have cost us a lot of lot more money <coughs> and a lot more time, we simply, just as you have here, bond our note. We took a note with a bank, got such an excellent rate, 10 years, 120 payments, a million dollars, $10,000 a month. So if you could get something similar, mm -hmm. 10 years, 20,000 a month, I leave that, that I know, but, but it's very affordable mm -hmm. and it absolutely must get done. This is not a, uh, something that you wish to have. It's something, it's like that pump station at the beach. It had to be done because if, if the pumps, if you don't have electricity to aerate, if one of those valves, uh, the grit is wearing the pipes out, <laughs> If that stops working, you have an industry down at that beach that is, you've got all kinds of hotels, you've got all those people down there. That can't stop. And, and, and that's just one example. You've got the, that new brewery that's pumping all kinds of stuff. The fact that one thing that you said that bothers me, and I want, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. That's the mantra from business. The fact that you've there are six mil you used the I think six million gallons, uh, and then something about two million gallons are coming from aquarium. So where's all that extra water coming from? Those numbers are. If it was a little bit closer, it would be like, gee, you know, it's, I guess it's it's not too bad. But the distance between what's coming in and what's being you know coming through aquarium, that's that's got to be measured, and then you have to figure out who's who's pumping out their cellar <laughs> into the into the septic you know into your system yep. because that's somebody the water's coming from somewhere and that's that is a big problem so that's all i have to say thank you very much if i could respond to you it, please do i one, i guess one of my thoughts has been since director is tell the truth bring the news forward whether good or bad let those, this committee, board of selectmen, town manager, voters decide. Um, because to not say something would be worse than, than bringing the message forward. So I understand it. if this gets presented to the voters, they may not vote for it this year. I mean, things like fire stations and schools have had to go through multiple years. But all I would ask is that this is a project that the collective staff, a mindset of 10 people outside engineers has worked hard on. It's something that I think we need to give the voters at least the opportunity to decide. And I can understand differences of opinion. But I think I would ask that we give the voters the chance to. And the thing, Chris, that I like about this as well is that the voters, it's not just one maintenance project this year. It's going, to be, it's going to be paid for by voters and taxpayers over a length of time so that people 10 years from now that are moving to this town are going to be helping to pay for these, right. this uh, essential. Uh, versus, for instance, we go out and buy a new ladder truck and we do it all in one year. Right. This is being spread out so that the the, uh, there's no tax impact on here that I, you know, you didn't put that on it here. It hasn't been determined yet. Okay, I but the thing is that it's going to be very small because it's going to be spread out. It, it, so it just in perspective to the risk, right, it's going to be very small. Okay, thank you very uh, much. I'm done. <clears throat> My first thought would be if we need this project, a dispute between some members of this committee and the Board of Selectmen over the ability to get more engaged in the observation and perhaps management of these departments should not determine the value of doing this project. 
the, this system was shut down a few years ago because it wasn't kept properly, it wasn't maintained properly, mm -hmm. and it wasn't funded properly. If we vote against doing this, we're going to just regress to a point in time where something terrible is going to happen. Having said that, I, I would then go on to two questions. The first of which would be, if you can't do these things, what's the worst case scenario for not having done them? And secondly, if you do do these things, is there any benefit through FEMA in terms of the community rating system for collecting points for flood insurance premium reductions? I can speak to the, the FEMA one only because I sat with uh, the Rockingham Planning Commission the other day and our planning staff and went through the the uh, FEMA rating system um, I don't know that we reviewed that day any additional points that would come from these issues but that doesn't mean that there isn't one I, I mean I think of the emergency generator uh, project that is being you know back up you're talking about flooding and preventing infrastructure problems um, having safety plans in place, I would have to go back and check that. I'm pretty sure that part of it probably would qualify yeah. for the points. Yeah. <clears throat> and then your first question was? Uh, uh, basically, what's the worst case scenario if this is defeated and you can't do any of these projects? Well, we, <coughs> this is the current situation that we operate in. It's, yeah. But it's, it's with some risk. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm trying to get. What is the risk? Well, one of the risks is if we had, for instance, blower <coughs> lost all power to the blowers and we weren't generating any air through, uh, certainly we'd have to react, but it would take a day, I would say, to get other portable blowers in there. Um, in the meantime, the water quality would, it would start to suffer over a period of time. And ba basically, after an eight-hour period, we had <coughs> such a significant die-off of the bugs in the in those aeration lagoons that Mike would probably have to call for another order of chlorine so that we could keep the chlorine tanks full because we'd be dosing pretty heavy our discharge. Um, we'd also become very reactive. Very reactive, which if is costly. Go, yeah, we'd go to an overtime rate i mean all it would be a 24-hour hands-on right now we get to walk away after 3 30 we get to monitor the plant remotely through through laptop we can tell you what's running what's not running um the fine if you were to uh run a muck of the process and discharge above your limits and the epa found that you did so with you know, without using your head, 37000 a day. So there's a significant negative cost of not doing this. Significant, right. Thank you. So how many times have the pumps failed, the generators failed? Well, realize now with the aeration, there is no generator attached to it. The only thing we've, we've had is we've had days where, like, Two summers ago, three summers ago. It's like one day in July. We were without, we were on generator power for the rest of the station for about an eight-hour period. The ice storm that we had several years ago, at our main plant generator. And the breakout costs for this, the breakout costs for the generators. Um, the whole project is about five hundred thousand dollars. About five hundred thousand for that. I'm sorry. Did I see someone's hand up, Mike? I was just going to add a comment, uh, if I may. I think, in response to Mr. Ladd's comments about, regardless of how everybody feels, how everybody gets along, and all that wonderful stuff, and that, here's the problem. There's a statute that makes it very clear. And when I want something, if I don't tell you, if, if you're going to be able to give it to me, that I want it, here's why. Why should you even think about giving it to me or selling it to me? So what I'm trying to say is, it's not just the budget committee trying to do the due diligence or seeing if we're doing the right thing for the taxpayers or Statute 34. It is, do we need it? They should be able to willing to show us why they need it. 
and the public. This budget committee represents the taxpayers, a legislative body. We are representing the taxpayers. If we think that they've got a good reason or a legitimate reason for doing something, we give it an approval. If we think it's a bunch of whatever, we don't. And it's up to the people who are asking to present the case to us. And they didn't. Thank you. Tim. What is the uh, tax impact on this? I don't know. That would be something that the finance office and with the work with the town manager. I, I, Madam Chair, do you know why we cannot know what the tax pack of this is? No, I'm as much in the dark as everyone else. And my biggest problem right now is lack of information. It has nothing to do with personalities. It has nothing to do with personal disappointments by members of this committee. It has nothing to do with any... I'm, I have agreed with everything everyone has said. <coughs> but the value of our vote it's because we're educated. <coughs> Excuse me, but I'm not feeling it. <coughs> want to add something? Well, I'm not sure. I think we all want to have uh, a knowledgeable vote that we can cast each of, our, each of the members and move away from her. And uh, certainly, how do you measure whether we're making a knowledgeable vote if we cannot? Measure what we're in front of us. What is the tax impact? Well, we don't know. Oh, okay. So we're supposed to. I mean, not knowing is what the group word of ignorance means. You know, to be unaware of, to ignore the fact. Facts that we should have. What is the tax impact? Oh, we don't know. Okay, fine. We'll vote in ignorance, not knowledgeable, not a knowledgeable vote, but a vote lacking knowledge. There's no reason that the chair, or I guess anyone else, can tell us why we don't know the tax <coughs> impact of this, this proposed draft. warrant article is. None of them are done yet. Yeah, there's no tax impact on any of them. No, That's none right. of them have a tax impact. What? Yes, and we have the same challenge everywhere, but here we're talking about $2 million. Dollars. And, and we talk about measuring. Well, you might say, okay, it's $2 million dollars and you know, we did some funky, well, I would call it funky things over at the village district, but we won't get into why I call it funky. <coughs> but, I uh, would say that has nothing to do with tonight. And I said, I won't go into it, so let's not go into it. Let's not go into that. As I said, I won't go into it, so let's not. I think what's needed, though, is so to have The point is, is that direction. you're making an, an assessment based on uh, a note, not a bond, that was taken, and it doesn't cost much based on your estimation, and that's fine, but... The warrant article that's in front of us says that it will be a bond or a note not to exceed 30 years. It could be five years, which of course would have a much more significant tax impact than 30 years. So again, we are basically clueless as to how this is going to get amortized. So we cannot have even a sense of the tax impact. You see, so it's a matter of again not knowing that which I think ought to be known. You're yeah. looking at me. Look to <laughs> no, you made an excellent case for, you know, management, you know, not being able to measure things means you can't manage things. So I'm looking at you <coughs> because these are things that should be measurable mm -hmm. that we are not giving given measurements for. And so then, then I look at, you know, the bottom line is when I watch your presentation at the Board of Selectmen, you know, I watch with great intensity. And I was very much favoring this. I want the work done. Mm -hmm. right. But when I look at the Warren article that's in front of me, I'm like, well, gee, this, this doesn't give me anything to base it on. It doesn't say, well, yeah, I want the work done, but, I mean, is it being financed correctly? I can't say. How much is it going to cost the taxpayer? I can't say. And even, even more disturbing to me is that I don't pay attention to DPW this past year nor the year before because we have experts on our committee and I simply yield to their wisdom and say okay I'm going to rely on their advice right they have questions that aren't answered I don't know how many I don't know how important those questions are I only know is that 
it looks like a black hole of more things that I ought to know mm -hmm. that I'm not allowed to know. Mm -hmm. And I cannot support uh, my oath of office and say, I'm going to cast a vote in a state of ignorance and tell my voters, tell the voters that they should do likewise. I'm just not going to do that. I mean, the RSA 32, the budget law, which was quoted, and I'm not going to quote what Jerry said, but we need to keep in mind there's a budget committee, 32 colon 1, which tells us why we exist. It is intended that the budget committee have budgetary authority analogous to that of a legislative appropriations committee, because we are, in fact, just that, a legislative appropriations committee. And it would be, in my opinion, uh, dereliction of my duty to cast an ignorant vote on $2 million, even though I very much want that work done. Mr. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. I've got a point. I want to make some comments, but I've got a question. Is this being taped? Will this go on the channel towards the We're being told mm -hmm. it's being taped. Okay, so fortunately you will be. <coughs> we'll see. My position is you have to go along with these repairs at this point. Otherwise, you'll be in the situation forced with this where they're going to spend 50, 60 million dollars to rebuild their plant. You know, if you're not in conformance with the EPA, you're, you're, going to, you're going to have bigger problems and you won't have it, be able to deal with it. For example, I was watching a planning board last night. They're talking about a 150-bed assisted living facility. You know, if the wastewater treatment plant gets above 80%, you, in the summer you know you're, you're close to the limit. You don't really have any choice. If you're going to put another 150 bed on the system, then you know, you know, I'm going to vote for it because I don't see any other choice. I mean, this process, the budget process this year was ridiculous. But you don't have any choice. Mike, then Jerry. Uh, <coughs> Ron, did you want to? Okay. No, go ahead, Mike. There's no question that this, these improvements need to be made. The problem that I worry about is the track record in this town and the way we go about it. Give us a blank check, mm -hmm. we'll take care of it. Now, all these people sitting at this table, there isn't anybody here that's been down there with a septic tank truck. I have. I've backed into that receiving area. It's been done at least once, if not twice, in the last 20 or 30 years. It's been readjusted and reorganized. Simple thing to back a truck with a tank in that the water runs out the back into a hole. Simple project. However, when you design the thing so that the ramp, this, this is similar to the proposal for the fire station at the beach when it was eight feet above Ashworth Avenue, how do you get into it? They backed a septic tank truck up there, built this thing, had engineers design it, and you couldn't <coughs> empty the truck because the front end was down and the, and the truck pitched this way instead of that way. In other words, so, it flowed toward the driver. They destroyed some of the cement. They made a ramp out around over here and instead of backing in this way, you back in this way and they made the dirt go like that and then down like that so the water went in the hole. Very simple. But they built it and then they had to redo it. We built a salt shed underneath the power lines so you couldn't dump a trailer dump in the salt shed. Smart move. We built a transfer station. They wanted waste, wood waste and trailers packed against the wall. They were going to pour a concrete cast in place wall. John Hangan and I rode all the way to the east end of nowhere in Maine, Unity, to look at a transfer station with a T-block designed wall that is cast and you build it in place. And you could take it down tomorrow and put it over there rather than cast it in one piece and throw it away. Underwood engineers drew the plan. They designed the wall on the right-hand side of the driveway going up to the transfer station. When you back a tractor trailer in there, the driver's door and the landing gear 
crank are on the left side of the trailer and the truck. Where was the wall? Here. How do you get in there to unhook it? I was on the board of selectmen. I said, I'm not going to vote for this until somebody figures this out. Took the design, cut it out of the plan, turned it over and put it on the desk. You put the wall on that side, you back the trailer in over there, the crank and the door are away from the wall. It's safe and it's not underneath the power line. Simple project. Saved $105,000 by moving it over there instead of over here. What I worry about, give me a check for $2 million, we're going to do this, and we start in, and somebody makes a whoops between the beginning and the end. Now you've built a washdown facility, you put a building on top of it, and how do you fix the whoops? And that's what I'm concerned about. The, the big project at the beach, infrastructure project, we don't have a plan. It's a design build. Give us $10, $14 million, and it's a start. That came from a past public works director. And we got pretty well along on that job, but there are streets down there that are probably never going to get done. And it's a shame, because it should have been done right the first time, not the second time, not the third time, and not forever never getting done. It should be done, planned out, not the, the last hour before we vote, planned out paperwork, and a guarantee that something's going to work when it's done. We go through this project after project after project, and it's discouraging, and it's discouraging to be denied access to something that I pay taxes for, that I'm elected to do a job, and I'm told I can't go there. I don't like that. I won't put up with that. And if it continues, there's going to be a problem in this town. I think it's time that this stuff stop. I've been accused of not going down there. I've been accused of saying things I didn't do. And I'll tell you, when I can't see the stuff and I can't look at it, and you want me to make a decision, my attitude is that I should vote no. I don't have enough information to vote yes and I will not abstain because that's not my job. So if you can put the paperwork together and assure that this is going to be built right, I'd vote for it. But until you do, I'm not going to vote for it. Because I can't let the people spend $2 million and have you come back in two or three years and say, it doesn't work, we need to adjust it. I don't want to hear it. It's as simple as that. This last minute stuff is is bad. Bad planning, bad organization, bad selling the product, bad everything. And you've been, not you, not you personally, Understood. but this town has had that policy for years and it gets worse and worse instead of better. And it's going to come to a head sooner or later. And it may have come to a head already. I don't know. But that's that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. And, and this is a lot of money. There are people in town that can't afford this. And yet we continue to vote to do these things because we're told it has to happen. We were told that the Church Street Station would shut the beach down. And they jammed it to the public in the 24th hour. It's not right. It's not right. We got it done. We got a good price on it. And it worked out well. But not all of the things that we've done in this town work out that way. I've said enough. For the record, let me say that as far as the subcommittee coming down and meeting with us, you're right. They didn't. I know they didn't. Individually, you're the taxpayers. It's your transfer station. It's your public works department. If individually you want to come down, just please ask for 15 minutes notice call. There's been a number of people that I've given probably 10 different couples a tour, of the, I call it the nickel tour, the five minute tour of the wastewater treatment plant this year. They come down for a permit and they, what's the big swimming pool? Oh, let me show you. And so we give them. So individually you can come down. Yeah. Um, 
and anything that I produce is uh, any document that the department produces is just ask for it. It's done with tax dollars. It's yours. Yeah. And as far as our credibility to produce, I think in nine months you've seen uh, you gave us p paving money last year. We paved. We got it all done. We spent down to the last, I think, couple thousand dollars. Uh, did so well that we were able to pave Toll Farm Road, which was supposed to be on the 16 paving plan. Um, yeah, Church Street pump station came out right. Yeah. Why? Because we realized halfway through that we had the wrong engineers, and we hired the right engineers and got it done instead of for four million, two point something, yeah, two point four. So, no, we I, I I agree. Some things, some funky things were done in the past. Um, but these, they're not they're not getting done funky under my rule and these funds do include I mean this is not just construction dollars this is thinking planning yeah. preparing yeah. I'm sorry but we don't know that I have to jump in we don't mm -hmm. know that we're sitting here right now we, and we do not have a list of even the expenses yeah. has any no I, I feel sad that in some respects you you you've got a history 20 years worth for most of these committees and, and and so that's and it's hard to shake that and yet at the same time I'm coming in representing a department that probably stuttered and stumbled in the past Chris, part of and that, I don't take it personal part of that history and I feel like we're on the defense a little bit tonight part of that history we did rally for the Church Street pump mm -hmm. station yep. we did support that we did support the beach infrastructure. We did support the police station. We did fight and support getting both stations done in one phase, not two, in this committee. We've been painted as something that should be done away with when in fact we have fought for every crucial thing that has been put in front of us to the end. Heated debate. But the outcome always gave a recommendation on those things. There were more. It goes back. My first one was 15 years ago with the fireboat when we were sending guys out in a rubber dinghy to save people in the ocean instead of waiting for the Coast Guard. All right? We fight on this committee. We debate on this committee. We're transparent on this committee, and we try to educate the public. It's not your, I'm not holding you oh, no, responsible, but I'm saddened by the fact this is stuff that we need. I'm worried that in the future, as it, what we say for one entity, we say for other entities, okay? We talked the other night about schools and building the school, and now is the time because money is cheaper, all right? They came in very well prepared. They gave us the impact of what that would cost. They gave us a full scope of the project. They gave us the plans. They ran down the details. They had the answers, and they allowed us open access every step along the way. What people saw was that we approved that. Mm -hmm. How could you not? All right? In spirit, again, a lot of us are with what needs to be done in this town. A lot of us, especially those who have served on this committee for a number of years, know what happens to DPW. You're the redheaded stepchild. If, if some other department needs money, it comes out of you. And kind of first smile I saw all night. You know what I'm saying is true. Yep. And if there's a project that has to go by the boards, again, you're the one that it's, that it's, it's taken It's only smiling because it went white. It didn't, it didn't you know, stay red. And it's like, how do we get through this impasse with what we need to actually make a recommendation? And you know, I hate to say this, but when you come in Thursday, one week before, the drop dead day, well, actually, not even. Next Wednesday is the drop-dead day for us, and that's only because we added one more date, yet one more date to do this, all right? Yep. What do we do? Do we withdraw? Do we give you an opportunity to give us the figures? Do you allow our committee? We didn't pick anybody. We weren't going to send you half a dozen people who didn't know what they were doing just to go poke and be nosy. We sent you two guys that a selectman who know how things operate on both sides in here who have spent Mike I don't even want to go in the law I was you've logged Mike down DPW and Jerry spent as you know a great deal of time yep. um, 
what, exactly what we're talking about right here. That was the idea. Mm -hmm. We don't, last night when we were talking about our last meeting, when we were talking about, you know, storage and computer storage, quite honestly, I don't have a clue. I know how to turn it on. I know how to do email. I go to Tim and ask him because that's what he does, all right? In this same regard, these are the guys that we went to. That's why the whole committee didn't need to embark on you, and that's why their recommendations would have carried a lot of weight in here to help you. We're not here to penalize oh, anybody. Fine. I understand. Okay? Yep. All right. Tim, your hand's up. Thank you. And they have helped me. And thank you, Mike, for your, your, your viewpoint. It certainly solidifies where I'm likely to vote. I'm likely to vote with the resident experts on our committee, which is you and Jerry. But, Chris, you, uh, you said something that I found out curious. You said any taxpayer can go down there and you know, do the talk. And, but somehow our subcommittee, it's a different matter. I think it has to do with Robert's Rules of Order, posting meetings, things of that nature. Are you, were you aware that uh, we subsequently decided to appoint Mr. Clough and Mr. Zanoy representatives? As representatives, which was different than... Were you aware of that appointment? I understood that that was some of your actions, yes. And. And so the communication requests from them as our representatives, not as a subcommittee, but as our representatives, was a problem, more of a problem than a, a taxpayer coming down and asking for the tour, from what you were saying no. earlier. Mm -hmm. Maybe I misunderstood when you said any taxpayer can come down and they get, you they can, get the tour. You can, any time. But yet our representatives could not. They could have come down any time they wanted to. The door was not closed to them at all. Well, I'm, I'm hearing a different message from our representatives on that point. And, and individually, they could have come down at any one time. Individually, but not individually. the two of them together. If they wanted to meet as your representatives, I was instructed, requested that we meet as a formal meeting that with the manager's I office. See. So you were instructed by your boss to behave that way. No, okay. to, to okay, treat we'll it as a sub right. as a right. subcommittee. I, I appreciate we it. We want to keep I notes, so we I want to have it posted. I appreciate the greater understanding as to why you took the stance that you did. That's uh, very useful to know. Yeah. Now, you also mentioned uh, to Mr. Ladd's uh, question what would happen if these risks were realized. Um, I'm curious as to what your estimation of the probability of the realization of these risks occurring in the next 12 months. Low. Pardon? We, low. We've been operating. So we have a very this low This is the risk way we risk. operate every single day. So we have a very low risk situation. Correct. Okay. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you, Madam Chair. Is there anyone else who hasn't spoken that has a question? Sonny, you have. Jim, by all means. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I need a little education. Um, I don't have enough time, obviously, to have you educate me on the whole process here, nor do I want to be, but um, you're the department head, right? Correct. For eight months, nine months, ten months? Since April. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but you obviously have experience in the field before that. They oh, yeah. take you off the bakery line and put you there, so. True. How, how long do you have in the field? Um, uh, 30 years now. About 30 years. Okay. Um, and your experience lies in? About 17, 18 years. Okay. Um, Mr. Doobie, was it? Yeah, I've been with the town since 98. Okay. And I, I know Jerry seemed to point you out by saying he had a lot of respect for, for what you do. Um, so that experience from from the three of you has led you to this proposal, correct? Um, With the help of consultants. Correct. Um, that has to weigh a lot on on my vote. I came in here quite quite honestly. I came in here thinking this is probably an easy decision for me. Um, Mr. Plouffe makes it a little bit tougher for me to vote for this because of, of what he's brought up. And I wish we would have had the opportunity to have his input on this. Uh, 
because I value his input on this and, and it would have made it a lot easier for me. But I don't want to hold that against the project. Um, I, I think you or well, this project got caught in some sort of gamesmanship or one-upsmanship that should have never occurred. Um, I, I, I still don't understand exactly why it did. I think there was some frustration on, on a lot of different levels. Um, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't be involved in that. I, no. Department heads shouldn't be involved in that. Right. That's, that's above your pay grade. <coughs> that's what, how the elected officials want to have a tug of war between two boards. That, that shouldn't involve you, mm -hmm. and I think it did, and I think it, I think it's unfortunate. But because I think what happens is we're not looking at, do we need this project? Um, from my brief introduction to this, I, I, I can only go by the department head's word. I don't think you're coming in here, looking to spend two million dollars of taxpayers' money just because you want to have a warrant article on there. You know, I, I think your job is to come to the town, to go to the Board of Selectmen and say, this is what I need to do my job properly to protect the taxpayers of the town. And I think you've done that. Maybe it would have been a little bit better to do it with more information to us, with less of roadblocks imposed on you by, by other people, but that didn't happen. So this is where we are. So. Uh, it, it, it makes it tough because the, the, there's some people here that, that I just wish would have been able to weigh in on it, but I, we don't have that information, so I'm going to have to go by this experience that's sitting up here in front of me who's telling me this is what we need, and hopefully somewhere down the road we can make sure we get that extra oversight so that the things that Mike was talking about don't occur. So that's all I have to say about that. I agree with what he said. <laughs> Madam Chair? Well put, thank you. <clears throat> yes, Eddie was first. Yeah, I'm looking at the calendar. On the 14th, you've got the public meeting. In February 6th, you've got the delivery session. If you don't vote for it, this warrant article, you're just putting the town at risk. I wanted to speak to being above the pay grade. Because, you know, Jerry wrote, wrote, read a section of RSA, and I don't think he finished that paragraph when it comes to reviewing the services performed and so forth. The last sentence in that paragraph says, it shall be the duty of all such officers and other persons to furnish such pertinent information to the budget committee. So it is not above their pay grade. It's part of. No, but I think they're caught, Tim. Well, I, I, no, I, I, caught under this year. I understand he got a directive from his boss. Yeah. Okay, and so when you say you're relying on his experience, you're actually saying you're relying on his experience as filtered through his boss. I'm relying no. on no. I'm relying on Mr. Plus' experience. Please don't tell me what I'm saying. Yeah. No, I said. I, was, I want to. I'd when like one to makes on the argument this. that we're relying on his experience, we have to recognize that his action relative to receiving our representatives was based on direction from his boss. We can assume that he is behaving, I think it's reasonable to assume that he's behaving and reporting to us through the filter of his boss. Most employees would in fact behave that way. They, they want to filter through their boss. All right, Everyone wants to protect their job. Mr. Pluff, on the other hand, has no boss, except of course the voters, which is where we all stand. And so I'm getting my information from Mr. Pluff, what I kind of know I don't have any filter there. All right. Is there anything more on the subject matter? Subject matter. <coughs> Not. We've all given our opinions. Well, I mean, I, I, I see a problem here. Is there a solution? I mean, That's I'm, it. I'm, I don't know what, I don't know which way to vote here, because I would like to. Is there a possibility that this can be fixed? Sandy, can I, can I just ask my question? And I know that you are extremely professional in what you do. Everything that is listed in this project, do we need to do it? Probably. No. Yes or no? Not probably. 
do we need to do what is listed in this proposal? In the next 12 months. No, no, don't. No, you be quiet just a minute. <laughs> just a minute? Need <laughs> my, I agree with that. Do we need, Mike, to do you be quiet. these? It, it all increases the improvement of the plant. But the breakdown of that answer is, is it necessary in the next 12 months or six months or will it go two years? And I don't think that I can tell you that it'll go another year without a problem. I haven't stepped foot on that property down there since last October because I was told we shouldn't go down there. So I don't go there. Okay. And I can't get any information other than what I what I see, and that's all I have to go on. Would you so, say so it, it is so it is fair to say that the items listed are needed because d down the line I said that right in the beginning. Right, okay, so you will agree with me that they're needed. So I would submit to this committee that we take the high road. A shame that you guys, as our reps, but take that right out of didn't, it. Take, forget, take that no, right forget out about of it. it. Okay. So, because I don't want to be the bad guy. Right. Here. So everybody sitting at this table, let's take the high road. Let's put it forward. Let's have our public hearing before the public. Get the public's input. And I'm not going to vote it, for this it's, tonight. It's either going to it's either going to go I'm or it's not. But let it go to the public go. hearing and see what the public says. Okay. They no, may no, sure vote. It's going even to if we don't. But but let's. But stop I can't vote for it. Up, Chris. Let's stop beating I'm up public beating works. On. Everybody, yeah. I'm not. Major, Major, I'm yeah. Not. A lot of people on this committee are beating up the public works. Beating up. Uh, you know what? I don't see it. Mm. I don't see. I don't see that either. Well, no. I do. So let's just take the high road and let's. let's take the high road and right, go with what? the DPW's yeah. estimation. Uh, Jerry, it's a very low risk. Let's close here by saying. You know what? what? Before you close. Very low risk. Okay, I'm going to ask you the same question because you're the one who spent a lot of time recently yeah. in the power in in the um, sewer treatment plant. Do we need what's on this plan? There, there's a lot of doubt in my mind that these are absolute musts. There's a lot of doubt in my but mind. But when we say absolute must between the two of you, well, I mean, are these we are, talking these are about, definitely improvements. Yeah. Are we talking about a year or three years? Are we inside of a three, four well, year I mean, window? you could break down, break it down into pieces. You know, if I saw the repiping arrangement that they wanted to do and why they wanted to do it, because we haven't been doing it ever since 2010, the state said, hey, you're not doing it. We said, well, it's not a new plant. New plants might have to be reconstructed that way. And we're making the measurements and to satisfy you from a metrics point of view. And they, yeah. they took that answer. Okay. Right. And we said, well, great. That was six, five, six years ago. Okay. Now, I, 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 I wanted to get an update on that. Okay. What's driving it now other than a nice thing to do? Yeah. The generator. How fast can I, can I get a replacement generator in here and get me fired up within an hour or two? Where do I get it from? Can I get it locally? Do I have to go to Boston? Who, 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 who would supply me a generator to keep me going? Milton Cat. Okay. How, <laughs> how much power do I need? Blah, blah, blah. Can I get it here in a day or two? It's not an emergency in my opinion. Okay. Should we have a backup? Yeah, I thought we did. I asked Mike at one time, Mike, do we have a replacement generator for blower motors? And I think Mike told me yes. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. There's and never I thought, been, there's never been. There's never been. Even from the uh, transfer station, Mike? There's not. There's the, uh, the old Church Street generator yeah. but it's not big enough to handle it's not big power. enough so we'd have to go get we'd have to set up we'd have to think preventatively here okay if i go down what's my alternative what can i do where do i get the generator how fast can i get it who do i get it from is that a real problem to me you know i mean, I mean you know it's a short gap thing because you're not going to be down indefinitely you know, so there's a lot right. of things here that, that okay that, that i'm going to take this back here now look this is where we are and we acknowledge the fact that everything, everything that everybody has said has validity. Do we, is there a way that we can table this to next Thursday, to next Wednesday for a vote? And in that time, can you give us spreadsheets relative to the cost? We are in the dark here, I'm telling you. For those of us who have a problem, don't have a problem with the concept. We have a problem in the details. And it's $2 million worth of details. One minute, okay? And arrange for a visit so that these two men can come back. We don't, we can't all go down with you. We don't all want to go down with you. 
but have that time to spend that should have been done before now. Let's put everything that's gone by the boards by the boards. Or are we really pushed to the point right now of having to take a vote on this? Madam Chair? Yep. I'd like to rephrase the question to Jerry and Mr. Pluff. We get a, get a clear statement from the DPW director that the risk or the probability of these risks being realized in the next 12 months is, quote, very low. Do you have any reason to believe that that is a not accurate assessment? I would, I would agree with him. Right. Michael? I agree. Okay. So we're dealing with a very low risk, according mm -hmm. to all the experts here, on this potentiality occurring. And we have a whole bunch of questions, most of them coming from our experts. There is not time for them to get those answers, even if we delayed it till Wednesday or Thursday. So I think we just, okay. just vote on it tonight and move forward. Uh -huh. Can I make a final statement before you vote? Mm -hmm. Low risk, high cost. Mm -hmm. When you look at the in the past, when we uh, brought forth the Church Street pump station, the reason why we brought it forth and brought it forth so quickly was we envisioned that under the high summer flow, that pump station would die. And if it did, we had to ask ourselves, who wants to go down the Ashworth and tell them, oh, everybody has to leave because the pipes are full, the effluent's going to start coming out. Oh, by the way, the state beach is closed because you can't use any of the public bathrooms. We have no capacity. The same thing would exist with this aeration portion. Not so much the other piping, but the aeration portion. As I said, that's the Achilles heel. So it's a low risk that it happens, yes. So we lose power for eight hours in a day. I might be able to get a generator. I'll get a generator out of Boston. But in the meantime, we'd be forced with because we may, at that low risk, go to those 100,000 people on the beach and say, You're, we're going to give you an administrative order. It's a, the health officer is going to help us do it. You're shut down. Ashworth, leave. All the hotels, leave. By the way, nobody can go on the beach. We'll come down with Jersey barriers. Well, I shouldn't say that. The police would be the only ones who would have the authority to make them leave the beach, but there's no place to go to the bathroom because the businesses are all shut down and the bathhouses are shut down. I suppose people could still go into the beach. It gets to a water quality issue is really what it gets down to. So it's a low risk. You can take it. We've been living with it. That's why I see it as a low risk. But it has a, we are not, we're, we're, we're a community of 15,000 during the winter and 100 and some odd thousand during the summer. And that's really the critical time. So we're not the standard little community that this plant serves day in and day out. We have much bigger liability, much bigger liability to others. And as far as when Jennifer and I went to school, we took an oath as professional engineers. We're charged here with upholding the public trust, not upholding the selectman's trust, not upholding the manager's trust, although that's implied, we're a charge with upholding the public trust. I am charged with and brought forth a project that says this is a risk the community should consider. This is an, the Achilles heel of the plant. We should get this corrected. To do so otherwise would be dismissive of my charge as a professional engineer. That's why it's here before you. That's it. Well, I'd like to respond to that. I think we've, 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 yeah. we've had an hour on this, All right. um, Jerry, up here. <clears throat> All right. So the, mo uh, the motion was to uh, recommend as written. We have a second. All those in favor of recommending this Warren article as it is written. Two, three, four, 
six. Seven. Seven. Well, when you sit back there, don't know you're there. All right. And those opposed? Nine abstentions. No, seven six. Right? What was the vote? Seven seven. Oh, seven, seven. seven. Did you vote? Wait, wait, seven seven. Oh, wait a minute. There's fourteen of us here. Yeah, that's right. We better take. We better take that count. All those in favor again? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. All right, and all those opposed. One, two, three, two. Three, six, seven. Four, five, six, seven. It's a split vote. Seven to seven. Who wants the next one? So motion fails. No. Motion, motion fails. fails. Yes. All right.